This is Join Us in France, episode 67. Hello, I'm Annie, and I'm glad to be here today. It's going to be a short episode, but it's going to be something important for many of you who are going to be visiting Paris soon. I'm going to share with you 10 tips that will make your life easier when getting around Paris. As you probably know, if you visited other major cities in the world, one of the biggest problems when you're touring anywhere is getting, getting around, finding your way around a place that you don't know with a language you don't understand, maybe. Maybe you're not comfortable with the bus system. Maybe it's completely different than what you're used to. And so it really makes people uncomfortable. And we don't want to let that ruin your vacation. And you really don't want to spend any more time than you have to just in transportation. So here are some tips that I found very valuable in getting around Paris. Paris is not my city either. I have visited many times, but I still need to look at the map. I mean, I'm not one of those people who can just know. I, I kind of do that in my home city of Toulouse, but I don't, I can't do that in Paris. I have to uh, look it up. So join the club. You're right along with me. <laughs> okay. So very first tip uh, for getting around in Paris is that you have to know that French people will give you directions by landmark, not by cardinal points. So they're not going to tell you, get out of the underground and go north. You know, it, nobody's ever going to say that. But they might say, get out of the underground and go towards, you know, landmark, this or that. And so it would help if you have a map with you that has the major landmarks that you can see from a distance. Very often you can see the Tour Montparnasse from a distance, and that's south. The Eiffel Tower you can sometimes see from a distance as well, and that's going to be southwest. But it would help if you just remember that the Sacré-Cœur is north. The uh, Gare de Lyon is east. You know, that's the, that sort of just general directions. Um, and obviously, this is something I didn't do, but I did it in the middle of my trip, my last trip. I didn't have a, a compass on my phone. And I installed an app that does that because it is so helpful. You get out of the underground, turn on your phone. You don't have to, you know, even with a French cell phone plan, if you have to wait for Google to tell you where you need to go, you might be standing in the rain for a few minutes waiting for it to decide, you know, think about it and decide. And heaven knows what it's trying to load in the background. You know, the more I use Google, the more I go, ah. it's so painful because you ask one question and it gives you a completely different answer. Something you're like, no, I didn't want a restaurant called Montparnasse. I wanted the street called Montparnasse. So it's really, really helpful uh, to have a compass on your phone. That way, if you have a map, if you're navigating by map, it'll make your life easy. So first thing is, remember, French people will not give you direction by cardinal points, but by landmark. And so if you know more or less where the major landmarks are, it'll make your life easier. Second thing, and this is related to what I just complained about having to do with Google. Online maps are really good, but they are really slow at times. And even though you do get internet access, you get 2G in the underground in Paris, it's really slow. I mean, 2G is super slow. And when I'm at the surface, I get 3G. And my cousin who was with me, uh, g g her phone got 4G. And still, we were just waiting around, waiting around, waiting around. And it was raining on us. So I wasn't happy about that. So I just went to a little kiosk and I bought a paper booklet, which has a map of the major monuments all the street names in alphabetical order and just a reference where you, what page you can find it on. That was a total lifesaver because there's nothing worse than, okay, I'm at the right train, you know, I'm at the right metro station. Now what? Um, it's, it's really uh, a little bit frustrating. Okay. So that was number two. Number three, remember that if you are walking around either Ile Saint-Louis or Ile de la Cité, so near uh, Notre-Dame, there is only one metro stop. It's called Cité, 
And I think it's on line four. Yes, I was right. It's on line four. So that's the one and only. Once you're in the small streets around Ile Saint-Louis, like imagine you went and got ice cream, Bertillon ice cream is along there, which is exactly what we did. Um, we ran into tourists who were desperately looking for a metro station because most places in Paris, you walk around a little bit, you'll eventually find a metro station. Not on the islands. On the islands, it's just the one. And to find that one, when you're out of Notre Dame, you walk, aw- you know, you walk away from Notre Dame. It's to your back. Uh, you go- walk across the Parvis, so the big plaza in front, and you keep going straight a little bit, and then you're going to take a right, and it's going to be uh, in that area. It's not very far, but you can't see it from Notre Dame, so that's the one you need. Okay, tip number four. All right, this one is probably obvious to you, but some people don't understand the difference. In Paris, you have two modes of transportation, well, more than two, but the two that are on rail, let's say, are the uh, metro and the RER, R-E-R. The metro will stop a lot and is a lot slower than the RER, but if you need to cross Paris... Um, do take the RER. It's much faster. It doesn't stop as often. It, it, it has more speed in between the stations. Um, I think that's a, that's a good way to go. But if you're just going a few blocks, then the Metro would be better for you. Tip number five, how can you tell which Metro or which RER train is on the platform already If you arrive and there's already a train there, you didn't see the front of the train, you don't really have time to read the signs, how can you tell? Very easy. You look inside, above the doors, you have the line, the the drawing of the line. And those are color-coded in Paris. And so that's how you know. You just look. When you're looking for your destination, try to make a note in your head of the line, of the color of that line, And then you'll know instantly if it's the right one or not. Isn't that handy dandy? That's how Parisians can just rush in and they know. It's not that it, there's only one train stopping there. It's that they quickly look at the, at the signs above the doors and they know right away. All right. Tip number six. What metro ticket do you need? Um, this is fairly easy. Most tourist attractions are going to be in zone one or two. So most tourists get away with just doing one and two. But there are a few attractions that are outside of those. If you want to go to La Défense, that's in zone three. If you want to go to Le Stade de France, which is where all the big uh, soccer games are, that's also in zone three. There are other things. So while most people will get away with zones one and two, It's only a few euros more to get three, so, you know. The other thing to consider is if you are going to be going to Versailles, that's in zone four. So if, you're, if you know you're going to be going to Versailles, maybe you should take a fourth zone. Unless, unless. There are two kinds of train tickets in Paris. The kind for the locals and the kind for the tourists. Price-wise... They're about the same, really. I mean, you don't pay a heck of a lot more. But the locals, even if they just buy one zone, on weekends and holidays, they can use the metro in any zone or the RER in any zone. So say uh, you're, you live in Paris, uh, you just stay between one, one and two, but on a Saturday you're going to be going to see Versailles, You could do that on your one and two, so long as you get the Navigo card, N-A-V-I-G-O. That's, that's the one the locals get. It's really easy to get. Any, anywhere there's a person, you can ask for it. And all you need is five euros and a photo ID. And it doesn't have to be a specific size photo ID. It has to be kind of small. So even a you know, vacation photo, you can cut out your face and sli- slide it in there. It'll do just fine. The five euros is not a big deal because you, in the end, even if you just buy for one week, it'll, it'll work out. 
And your Navigo card is good for 10 years. So if you plan on coming back to Paris and you're good about hanging on to such things, then, you know, Navigo is a good way to go. And that way, even if you just buy, you know, one and two for the week you're there and you save your visit to Versailles for Saturday or Sunday, then you'll go out there for free. So that's one thing to know. Otherwise, if you get the Paris visit card, there is no fee to establish that. It's just a little paper card and you don't need a photo ID. So, yeah, and honestly, the the difference in price between the two, I, I'm not sure there is any. Um, so it's whatever works best for you. Tip number seven, are you on the left bank or are you on the right bank? And how can you even tell? Okay. I'll try and explain this painlessly. Notre Dame, the cathedral, faces east. And the river Seine runs east to west. So if you are on one of those lovely bridges over the Seine River and you are facing the river the way it flows, so you're facing west, then the right bank is to your right and the left bank is to your left because that's how it's supposed to be. You're supposed, you know if it's left or right because you have to face the way the river flows. And then that's how it works. So if you have, you're back to Notre Dame, then you're backwards. You see what I mean? So it's just, a, you have to get used to that. So, and this is where it gets a little bit, you know, confusing. But if you're exiting Notre Dame and you are going left, you're going to the right bank. If you exit Notre Dame and you go right, you're going to left bank. I know, I know, it sounds like. But the thing is, right at that spot, the Seine River, there's two branches of it. Because the Notre Dame is actually on an island. So that's why it's a little bit more complicated there. But just remember, when you're on the bridge, watch whichever way the water flows. Face the flow of the water. Left is to your left, right is to your right. And that's it. That's all you need to know. Tip number eight. If you really don't want to mess with any of this and you would rather just get one of those hop on, hop off buses, there are at least a couple of companies that do that in Paris. They both seem to be just fine. I haven't used them personally, so I can't recommend one over the other, but they seem to have lots of people. The problem with these things is that, first of all, it's more expensive than taking the metro or the buses, okay? It's more expensive. For, for a week in Paris, uh, your metro card is going to cost you just under 30 euros for the week. If you get one of those hop-on, hop-off buses, it's going to be at least twice that, so at least 60 euros for the for just two days. So it gets expensive if you're staying a long time, but if you're just stay, staying a couple of days, it's pretty good. The other problem with them is that uh, you're on a circuit. So if you want to go from A to B, well, you might have to go through C and D and E, you know, on the way, and you, you, there's nothing you can do about that. It's just the way it goes. But at least you're not going to spend any time wondering where North is or where this landmark is. You know, it'll keep it simple for you. So I think that's a really good way to go if you're not too strapped for money and, and it's the sort of thing you enjoy anyway. There are some big cities where that's exactly what I do. I don't want to learn the metro system or the bus system. I just want to be taken around for a few days and... That's just simple and, and easy for me. So I've done it plenty. I think it's a good option. The other way to go is to get on one of those tuk-tuk bikes. So these are, these are uh, little bicycles with um, a seating area. You know, they're pulling people behind them. That's kind of expensive. It I, I might be more expensive than taxis even. Um, but it's kind of quaint. Uh, there are places where those little bikes can go that taxis cannot. So, you know, that's, I think that's also a pretty good option if you're into that kind of thing. To get on an actual taxi, car taxi in Paris is pretty easy. You have taxi heads uh, all over the place. But I also saw people hailing a taxi and getting on at an intersection, which in sub cities, that's totally a no-no, but obviously it can be done because I've seen it done in Paris. So, that's also an option. Uber 
uh, is trying to establish in France and is having a little bit of a hard time. There's a lot of taxi drivers who are resisting that. So, you you know, depending on when you come, it might be more established or it might have stopped altogether. It just, I, I, at this point, I don't know where it's going. So just, you know, try it. Maybe it'll work. And tip number 10 for today is take the bus. The bus in Paris, the bus, bus service is really good. And there are some bus lines that will pretty much follow along the river and take you to all the big things or near all the big things you want to see. Uh, line 69 will do that. Line 68 also. There's line 28 is also good for tourists. And 96. Those are the major ones. Just in once you've bought your little book with all the street names and all that, you'll also have a bus map. Every bus stop has the map too. I think the bus is the best way to get around Paris personally. Parisians are not used to it. They find it slow. It stops too much. Da, 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 da. But I like that you can see around you and you're not in this uh, underground hall. I don't know. I'm, I must be a little claustrophobic or something. All right. Well, before I end the show for today, I want to say thank you to Stephen. Stephen Stegman for his uh, donation via PayPal. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. And I want to say to all of you, you know, maybe you're kind of saying, ah, well, if I make a donation, it'll be too small or whatever. Actually, no donation is too small or too big. I mean, yes, you can go as high as you wish, but, um, you know, I just... It makes me feel good to know that there are people out there listening who want to give back. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Today has been a short show, but it had to be that way because I'm on vacation. Uh, it's a long weekend, May 8th. So I'm in Spain, actually. I'm going to go walk on the beach right now. So uh, lots, of <laughs> lots of good plans. Have a wonderful time preparing your trip to France, and I hope these tips will help you not get too lost in Paris. But I think once you have a map, a metro uh, card, and uh, a little bit of a, a compass, and a little bit of an idea where all the good stuff is, you're going to be just fine. Paris is no more complicated than most other big cities. Have a good one. Talk to you next week. Au revoir. This brings us to the end of another episode of the Join Us in France Travel Podcast. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful time preparing your trip to France. And remember, if you want to talk back, I love to hear from listeners. You can ask questions on joinusinfrance.com or follow me on Twitter at Paris Podcast or search for Join Us in France Travel Podcast on either Facebook or Google+. And if you're old school like me, you can also email annie at joinusinfrance.com. I want to thank listeners who support the podcast by going to joinusinfrance.com forward slash support. By doing that, you can help us earn a sales commission from retail giant Amazon. So before you buy anything on Amazon, go to joinusinfrance.com forward slash Amazon, click on your country flag, make your purchases in the usual way, and then we earn a small commission because we sent you there. It doesn't cost you a penny more, and so it's a really good win-win situation. But remember, first, you have to go to joinusinfrance.com forward slash Amazon. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Mm-hmm.